In a previous video, I described a, a very, very key seminal moment um, in my life, uh, something that God brought to pass in my life that eventually was very instrumental in my being able to spin out and escape the, uh, the orbit of um, addiction to alcohol and the uh, anxiety-free life for which I was uh, uh, so deeply invested and interested in, in getting. It was a moment when I had had uh, too much uh, to drink the night before. Um, I never, I, uh, in, in this particular case, my struggle with alcohol was not so much a quantity issue, but there were many, 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 many times when I would say, well, I'm going to go to a pool party or something, I'm going to have this much, but I would have this much. And I would wake up the next day and feel very guilty about that, about not keeping my promises and my commitments and really, and, and I was just very unhappy with myself for doing that. But convincingly so, uh, having doing that for years, it became more and more um, convincing to me that uh, perhaps I was an alcoholic, not in a quantitative self, but a qualitative self. But nonetheless, I remember uh, walking out of my deck one day and just lamenting the fact that I had gone above my uh, line of uh, reasonable drinking. And um, I was kind of beating myself up and asking myself the question, Jeff, why did you do that? You did it again. And I just remember crying out, I hate this. I hate this. And, um, and, and a, a light bulb went on. And it was definitely God who was uh, helping me to think more clearly and accurately about what happened. And I realized I, what came to my mind was, wait a minute. You don't do things that you hate. You do things that you love. And Jeff, the reason why you keep doing this is because you love it and not hate it. And that was a very, very important point in time to me. Now, I did not stop doing that at that particular point, but I did understand what the issue was. I did not hate what I was doing. I loved what I was doing. And secondly, I was going to continue to do it until I stopped loving it and started hating it. Or in other words, if I could illustrate, it was like this. I was lamenting how much I hated the fact that I kept stepping over and drinking more than I had just, uh, purposed to do. And I had been doing that for a long, long time. There was a quantity issue, alcoholism in my life uh, growing up. But now at this point, it was this. And I was saying, I hate this. But then I realized, wait a minute, you don't do things that you hate. You do things that you love. And the reason why I keep doing this is because I love it not because I hate it. And I hated it on some level, but I loved it more. And I realized, secondly, I was not going to be done with this matter, and I was not going to be able to spin free of the orbit of this, of this addiction until I, I, uh, uh, my hate for it went up and my love for it went down. And so then I would be able to say, now I love what is good and I hate what is evil, but my addiction was helping me to hate what was evil, love what was evil, and hate what was good. And I wanted to love what was good and hate what was evil, but I realized that morning on the deck, I was not hating uh, what was evil, but I was loving what was evil and I was hating what was good. And I, I realized that I knew that I had to make that switch in my heart. Obviously, it was a matter of the heart, but I had to, I had to learn. I had to learn how to think accurately about this matter so that when I could love what is good and then hate what was evil, then I was going to be able to make the changes that I wanted to make. Now, this applies to somebody who is stuck in the, uh, the issue of PMO, pornography, masturbation, and orgasm. I'm talking to the gentleman who's probably been involved in this for decades. He's tried perhaps dozens and dozens and hundreds of times to try to get out of this thing, but he can't. And he's probably saying to himself something similar to me. I hate the fact that I keep on going back to those can't get free. I, I, I hate it. But, I, but I, in previous videos, I tried to convince the person there is a level of hate and disgust that you're going to have. But the reason why you keep going back to it is not because you hate it, but because you love it. So the point is, how can one, how can one tip those scales as I was able to do uh, many, many, many years ago?
Well, I, here's a suggestion that I would like to make, and we're titling this particular uh, video uh, PMO No Never sem slash Suggestion Number One. Here's what I would like to suggest to you. I would suggest that you take um, uh, a, a significant amount of time, and uh, the, you know that's it's going to be probably uh, at least a couple of hours to do this. It may take longer than that, but uh, you're, I'm going to ask you. To, I'm going to suggest that you do something that's going to be, that I'm going to suggest that you do it in a very comprehensive way. And so you can't hurry your way through this. You're going to have to think your way through this, and it's going to take time for you to do this and to be exhausted about it, exhaustive and comprehensive. And here's what it is. I would suggest you take out either paper and pencil or you're going to write a, a, an email to yourself or perhaps a document. Go into your documents on your computer and you can document this on your computer and then you can save it and then you can print it. But here's what I'm suggesting that you document. I'm suggesting that you document all of the internal and external difficulties and stresses and strains and that, that you have gone through as a result of having this PMO problem. And that would be going back to, let's say if you started at a 10 and now you're at 30, then what I would suggest that you do is take out paper and pencil or, or your computer and write down everything that you can remember at the age of 10 that when you did PMO or just pornography, what was that like? What happened to your relationship with God when you chose to do that? What happened to your uh, conscience when you did that? Um, what, um, how did that embarrass you? How were you shamed by that? How did you do something that you knew that God was uh, displeased with? And get be, and walk it through the decades, through the years. Uh, your your junior high, and your high school, and your um, your college experience, and your engagement experience, and perhaps even your marital experience. How um, what? How did this get you into trouble? What did you do that was evil and sinful as a result of this? For example, did you uh, did you go through the the hardship of uh, the, the, the embarrassment and the shame of buying pornography at the store. Uh, did, you, uh, did your mom and dad find out and did, were you embarrassed and ashamed by that? Uh, did you disobey them? They told you, uh, close down the computer, don't do the computer, never do this on your computer, your phone, your iPad. This is, this is not to be done. We're giving you the, the privilege of having these devices you're going to have to follow our orders and not doing this for evil, having these devices for evil purposes, but you disobey. You know, so what happened to you when you disobeyed? Were you proud of yourself? Did it come out with a happy conclusion to that? Or did it have a bad conclusion? What happened mentally? What was the, what was the stress, intention, and distress that you placed upon yourself over these many years as a result of doing PMO? What was the personal distress that you went through, the emotional distress, the psychological distress, and the spiritual stress, and the physiological distress that you've been experiencing all these many years as a result of um, doing PMO? S starting first of all and foremost and more importantly, what, what, what kind of distress have you put yourself through spiritually in terms of your relationship with God? What kind of distress have you put yourself through and your parents as a result of disobeying them in these matters? What kind of stress and distress have you put yourself in in terms of the girlfriends that happened to find out that you did this? Okay. What were what was some of the dis, what when when what kinds of circumstances did you go through that were embarrassing and shaming in high school or in college in this particular matter? How about um, when you uh, when your girlfriend found out that you were doing this? What kind of distress did that put you through and her through? And then lastly, what kind of distress have you been going through with your wife if you happen to be a married person? What kind of distress are you going through doing something that you know that she does not want you to do it, but you're doing it anyway? What kind of distress are you putting yourself through by doing it in secret and, and hiding it from her, lying to her and deceiving her? What, what's going on? What kind of emotional, psychological distress 
are you going through living that life of deception uh, in, in, uh, when you're living with your wife? <clears throat> what kind of distress have you put her through, your fiance, your girlfriend, and even more importantly, perhaps more pertly, I should say, your, your wife? Now, I would encourage you to write all that down as painful and as difficult, as hard as that is. And try to be very, very thorough. Try to be very, very specific. Try to be very, very comprehensive in all those various modalities, emotional, psychological, spiritual, my relationship with God, my relationship with my parents, my relationship with my friends, my relationship with my girlfriends, fiance, my wife now, who I happen to be married to. And be very, very thorough and very comprehensive about writing it all down. Asking God also to bring to remembrance um, the things that um, you need to remember to be thorough and comprehensive in this documentation that you're going to go about. Now, when you finish writing this on your uh, computer and in your documents uh, file, you want to save it and then you want to print it out. Because here's what I'm going to suggest that you do secondly. I'm just going to suggest that you read that document every day for 90 days. No, you should actually read that document every day until you get to the place of loving what is good and hating what is evil. You see, this documentation is is your way of reminding yourself of all the reasons why you should hate it, but you don't remember and you forget and you choose to cover your eyes, cover your ears, and you choose to forget. But nonetheless, you still love it and you're not giving it up. And so what you're going to have to do is what we learn from the scriptures. Oftentimes in the scriptures, there are poems and, and uh, stories that are written uh, that are painful, but nonetheless necessary to remember the way that the Israelites went astray and the consequences that they faced in their poems and their documents and they're written for them to learn from those experiences, to wean them away from their evil tendencies and to bring them back to God. We can do the same thing in our lives and that's what I'm suggesting that, that you do, is that you be very specific, very thorough, very comprehensive very prayerful about this matter, and that you read it every day until you finally give up this PMO particular habit once and for all and for good and make a commitment to not, not to go back to it and that you renew that commitment for the rest of your life. And so this document is something that you're going, if you give it up tomorrow, you're going to have to read this document for a while, uh, even after you give it up, to remind yourself of all the awful sorts of distress that you brought into your life and others' lives as a result of this PMO problem that you've been addicted to. This is how we change our hearts with the help of the Holy Spirit. As we see our the decisions we made and the distress that it brings to us, primarily in terms of our relationship with God, and then others. We have to remember that. We have to stare at that. We have to reflect upon that. We have to remember it in a way that the Bible tells us to remember. Remember it in such a way that it changes our hearts and changes our attitudes and changes our behaviors and changes our decisions. Write it down. Be comprehensive. Be prayerful about it. And then read it. And keep on reading it asking God to drill down deeply so that eventually the more you see it and you remember it and you look at it and you stare it and you read it and you ask God to help you, then you, you get to a point where you cross over that tipping line to where now you really, really hate it and you love what is good and you hate what is evil and now you're ready to be done with it uh, once and for all and forever. This is... a uh, Something that's painful, hard, but I think something that will be necessary and good and transformative for you if you're willing to do that. You've not been willing to do that to date. And in large part, that's why you've not changed, because you haven't changed what you hate and what you love. In order to love what is good and hate what is evil, you have to have a very, very good reasons why you want to love God and the gospel and why you want to hate this evil. But you're, you're, to, this, to this point in time, 
you you have not cataloged in ways that I've described why you should hate it. And you're going to probably have to come up with a comprehensive 5, 10, 15, 20 page document documenting all the reasons why you have been so distressed as a result of this PMO habit. I'd be interested in hearing about um, what happened when you did this. Of course, you've got to do this prayerfully because God's going to have to take that truth and apply it to your heart in very, very deep well. But you have to do your part in remembering um, the way that we've talked about here today, all the, the painful distress that this sinful addiction has brought into your life, having turned your back on God, followed this addiction, there's nothing but distress. And the last thing I almost forgot was this. When you read this document, every single time you read this document, at the bottom of it, you need to write this. This is the last line, or perhaps every fourth or fifth line, you interject this in red type. This is what you want to interject in this document. If I do not repent and give up this addiction of PMO with God's help, I'm going to continue to have these distressing things in my life for the rest of my life. So you're going to write a paragraph, but then you're going to write down in red what I just said. If I do not give up and repent of and turn away from, turn back to God and turn away from this sin, I am going to continue to regurgitate this distress, psychological distress, emotional distress, a relational distress for the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. You can predict if you do not repent. Then if you're 30 years old right now and you've had uh, 15 years of all this distress in your life, well, it, you're saying to yourself and you're reminding yourself, hey, if I don't turn back to God and ask him to deliver me from this and do my part in that's involved, then I'm going to continue to experience this distress today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. The following year, and the following year, and the following year. Do you see what I'm saying here? You need to pull your head out of the sand, look at this document, make this document, create this document, and say to yourself, nothing's going to change. I'm going to continue to relive this distress every single day until I give this thing up. Do I want to live that way? It's been a horrible life. It's been a horrible problem. But I can predict nothing's going to change unless my heart changes, unless I turn and come back from God, unless he delivers me and rescues me and, and spins me out of the orbit of this particular addiction. The rest of my life is still, I'm going to be, I'm going to be drinking in this distress every day for the rest of my life if I don't turn back to God in this matter. I think it's important that you know that. And then you write the next paragraph and you write, you type that in red as well. And then you write that down the next paragraph and you fill this in so that as you're reading this document, you're reminded that I'm going to feel this way, think this way, act this way, and, and drink in this distress every day of my life until I turn back to God and be done with this particular matter. That's a very important component to this document. I almost forgot about it, and I'm glad that I didn't, and I thank God that I remembered. But this is how you learn how to hate what is evil uh, and cling to what is good, with God's help. God bless you as you make this document, uh, read this document, and I, and I trust and believe that by faith, as you draw, as you see these truths, God will work in your life and help you to uh, learn how to hate what is evil and cling to what is good and be done with this thing once and for all, and forever.